I hope you have an amazing sense of adventure like I do, because if you love treasure hunting or anyone in your family does, you're gonna absolutely love today's field trip that we're going to go on. Stay with us in the next few minutes because if you love prep studying and you have an adventurous spirit, you're gonna be perfect as a geocacher. <laughs> Stay right there. The best place I can tell you to go to get started with this is just straight to the website, geocaching.com. It's right there before you and you'll see how to spell it. They lay it out perfectly so you know exactly what you're getting into. It's like a giant treasure hunt all over the world. So once you find yourself there, all you need to do is set yourself up a nice little free profile and then click on search this area nearby or search the area around me. It's going to show you maybe as many as a dozen depending on where you're sitting right now, little treasure chests that you probably didn't even know hidden around you, maybe in a tree or on a fence post or underneath something or whatever. And some will be hard to find, some are easy, but look at the names on your little screen and finally pick out one that looks interesting to you. It's going to give a description of the geocache, sometimes a lot of information, sometimes very little. And then it's really fun because um, it's also going to tell down below often an additional hint that will be de that will be encrypted and then it'll have a little cipher or key out, out beside it where you can see how you would be able to decipher that little encrypted wording or they have now recently made it so easy all you have to do is hit decrypt and it'll decrypt it for you and tell you exactly what that extra hint is that's going to help you know just how to find the last few steps to get to that geocache but let me back up a little ways here. We have found one today we're gonna go out and try and find here in just a few minutes if the storm holds off, but this one says it's called Star Wars and that looks interesting. I don't have any Star Wars paraphernalia with me right now, so I'll probably bring something to put in that is not Star Wars related, but what it's saying is that most of the, the stuff inside of it is Star Wars paraphernalia. It says it's a very easy one to find and that the train is kind of difficult, but I don't don't think we're going to have too much trouble. It will give you the exact GPS coordinates, which makes it so much easier. This doesn't just lead you to a general vicinity. It should lead you to within 10 feet of the actual hidden cache. So that makes it easy. And then you can always scroll down the screen and see what other comments have been made. And what I love is that so oftentimes people that are really hardcore geocachers will take pictures of themselves when they found it or their adventure while they were out there. And those give me a whole lot of hints. So I kind of know what it looks like. I think this Star Wars one I can expect to be in some sort of an ammo can. It should have some paraphernalia in it that's Star Wars related according to these pictures. And it looks like people have had a really great great time going out and finding it. So let's go right now out there, see if we don't get eaten by the mosquitoes and find ourselves a geocache. <laughs> it's like we're only 200 and some feet away and here's a little parking spot, so here we go. <laughs> So I downloaded this little app called CGEO. I think it's available for both Android and iPhones, but it lets me sync it with geocaching and tells me right where the cache is. And it says we're here really close, but if I look at it, it has this great uh, compass that's gonna help us and it shows just how far we are away from the geocache. So I think if we follow this, we'll be able to find our way there quickly. All right, let's go find a geocache. <laughs> I'm thinking it's this way here. I'm thinking right somewhere straight down through here. Do you see that? It says we're 38 feet away. We're 
27 feet away. Nineteen feet. My word, what a day we have had. You thought we were looking for a geocache called Star Wars at the beginning of this. But after a long day of fighting off all kinds of large bugs out in the woods and then rainstorms that seemed to come out of nowhere that just washed us out. We finally gave up, waited for the storms to clear, and found a whole different section of the area here that had a whole different geocache. And there are so many to pick from, but this one looked particularly easy. It was called Noah's Ark and sounded fun and easy. It said it would be found in a coffee can and in a certain place on a trail. And sure enough, we found it. It was great fun. Yeah, something's in it. All right, I see. Looks like somebody's put some waterproof matches in here and several little, oh my, what is this? You've got fidget putty. <laughs> Looks like they've also got a little Iron Man figurine in here. Let me set that up. Now this isn't a really great cache. It looks like it needs a little bit of maintenance, but you're always supposed to take something out and put something back in. And I brought two little items I thought might be fun for somebody. The first one is this, it's a, actually a level and a tape measure, and then it's got a little post-it note pad in there behind a plastic cover, and then this cute little pen on the side that slides out so you can write stuff on the note pad. I thought that might be a good little thing to put in there. And then the other thing I thought might be a nice idea is this thumb drive that um, is actually one of those rubber armbands that actually you could store a lot of really cool information on here. and. Or, or even something secret. That would be really cool. So I'm going to put all this stuff back in there, seal it up tight, and tuck this little geocache right back where I found it under the bush. <laughs> it was great fun. Now, it wasn't a fantastic geocache, that's all right, but there's so much to learn from this fantastic exercise or, or fun that it is to go geocaching. Now it's your turn though. I want you to just think for a minute. I don't need to name all of the benefits of this, but I hope your wheels are turning in your head of all the ways this can benefit your family. Everything from just getting outside if you're used to being indoors, if you're urban folks and you just never have a reason to get out into anything other than the city, man, this is your chance to get out into the parks and such. It's great for exercise. It's great for a family unifying activity. Of course, there's a little conflict that goes on too as everybody decides they know which direction to go. But you learn how to work together. It helps you from being scared of the dark. <laughs> You're gonna come across some really fun stuff. Just on the trail, we came across everything from a space pen to some old sunglasses and all kinds of little fun, creative things along the way. But now it's your turn. I hope that you take and run with this idea. Look at the website, go out and find a few of these yourself and come back next week because we want to take the time to talk about how to make a good geocache for prep steading. So that's going to be incredible and we're going to talk about some of the great ingredients that you can put in your own private family geocache that no one else in the world knows about but you. <laughs> All right, until I see you again, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Hit the subscribe button and the bell and share this with somebody you love and go out and intentionally be a blessing to someone today. Bye-bye. <laughs>